Hey everybody, welcome back. I've been playing with uh, this thing here. This is uh, that drill I got from Banggood. I'll put an affiliate link in the uh, description if you want to get your own. But this thing is a 40 some dollar drill, which is a knockoff of a Makita and it even takes Makita batteries. But the deal is that these batteries here are actually the same price as a charger for these batteries. So this one, this battery itself came from Amazon and it was like 30 bucks. And if I want a charger for this thing, I need to shell out another 30 bucks. So I haven't yet charged this. So there's three out of four bars on this. But how the heck am I going to charge this thing? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you're an electronics hobbyist, you probably have what it takes to charge this thing at home relatively safely, at least as safe as a $30 Chinese charger would do. And I'll tell you, it'll cost you a lot less than 30 bucks. You see, I've got a thing for cheap lithium ion tools. Um, this drill I bought a couple of years ago at a Black Friday sale at Walmart. It was drill battery charger. I think it was like 22 bucks something like that and a couple summers ago um, this drill was the main driver in a, a dock build it's basically you buy a dock kit and it comes with all the pre-cut wood but you gotta screw everything together some of those screws were four or five inches long and this thing worked all day like it would work charge the battery do some more work must have driven 150 screws just on that one day and it still lives it has an 18 volt lithium ion battery. This guy here is a quarter inch uh, impact drill. It is an impact drill. And this guy also has a 18 volt lithium ion battery. This was on sale at Prime Cables for just under 30 bucks, I think. And it came also drill, battery, and charger. I also got this guy, but this guy's a different story. It does not have a removable battery but it has a built-in charger and it's just a little sort of drill um, or it's more of an electric screwdriver, not really a drill. It's got the quarter inch hex in the end and this thing was on deep discount. I think I paid $5 for this at Walmart because it's pink. You think that's going to scare me? So the crux of all this is that 18 volt batteries, whether it be this one, this one, or indeed this one, are only about five lithium ion cells, um, like 18650s, same cells you'd find in older laptops. New laptops use different cells in series. And because the five are in series, okay, that's, that's where this form factor comes from. You see how it's very low and long? So that's five cells there. That's five cells in there. This guy here, to get up a little bit more in the amp hours, they have five cells in series and two sets of those in parallel. But lithium ion cells are actually not all that complex. These guys say they're 18 volts. Some of them claim 20 volts. But really, we're talking about a nominal voltage versus actual usable voltage. All these cells, though, they usually have a maximum of 4.2 volts each. And 4.2 volts each multiplied by five, pardon my math here, gives us a grand total of 21 volts. Now we've got to be careful because some are actually 4.1 volts per cell. It'll depend what chemistry you have. And if so, we're talking about um, something like 20.5 volts. So I would say 20.5 volts is the safe charging voltage for any lithium ion battery. But some of them can go up to 22 because some um, electricity, some voltage is burnt in the charging process because they all have little charging boards on top of them. And by all, I mean most of them, I guess. So a good way to find out what's going on here is to actually test it. So 
So here's my multimeter. So pull the battery out of this prime cables drill. And this one here is clearly marked positive and negative. And we put our probe in the positive and put our probe in the negative. And look at that. We have 20.1 volts. So this battery is almost full. It's battery charger, which charges through a separate lead, which is why it may give a little bit more voltage because it could be going through diodes in order to protect it. Negatives on this side, positives on this side. So it charges with a charging voltage of 22 volts. The power supply for it actually outputs Um, 20 volts at 300 milliamps. So the 20 volts could actually just be a little bit of excess voltage from having a pretty shittily regulated power supply. This Walmart battery here and its charger as you can see, doesn't use the positive and negative as marked on the battery for charging either. One and two. So it has 19.5 volts across the positive and negative, but it uses this D plus C to charge and the negative. And it also outputs nearly 22 volts its charger outputs 22 volts DC at 350 milliamps. So this here Makita battery, its positive is here and negative is here. And it has 19.34 volts on it and it is not full. It only has three LEDs out of four it must charge through this little lead as well. Which my probe is a little too big to fit in. When in doubt, force it out. Okay, yeah, and it also has 19.34 volts there. And I can see, see that it's exactly the same as here. So if I put uh, 20, let's say 20 and a half volts on here, I should be able to charge this thing just as if I had a regular charger. I figured you guys would want to take a look at what happens during the charging of these batteries. So I have here the Prime Cables battery and the Prime Cables charger. And I figure we're going to want to check current and voltage. So I've got both my multimeters out. So I think first and foremost, um, it looks like the positive will be this line here in the middle to this line here in the middle. And so I have this guy here, which is a banana jack on one side and a croc clip on the other. I will put that here and to the milliamp range in my multimeter. Then I'll use my standard multimeter lead to go from the negative to that charge pin here. Okay, so my, my meter is in series with the charging current. And then I need to loop this back to over here. Um, I didn't really have a good way to do this. Most people have a little metal shim they can slide into there, which I don't have, but I do have a little piece of wire. So I can shove the piece of wire in there and that shouldn't be making contact with anything else on the inside. Well, let's hope not. But if so, well, I'm happy to have sacrificed my equipment for your entertainment. And I'll just grab the negative here and clip that onto here. Uh, actually, I should unplug this thing. Okay, and clip this onto here. And then to check voltage, I'll go from the negative here to the negative here. 
So um, voltage is actually measured in parallel and current is measured in series. So like so. Now I can turn this on to DC volts. We should get a voltage reading. And we do not. Oh yeah, there probably is a diode in here, that's why. And now we can put this to current. There's no current flowing. And let's plug this in. Oh, we are over current here. So we are flowing 412 milliamps at 20.6 volts. So if you look here, the 20.6 is trending upwards, 20.68, and it looks like the battery is still charging because you have the red and the green on together. They're 20.7 volts. So basically this is a uh, 400 milliamp current limit and this voltage will gradually climb up until we reach the maximum voltage and then the current will drop down. And all this is is just constant current, constant voltage charging. That's it. So when we set a current limit on a power supply and we set a voltage limit on that same power supply, the power supply will act the same. It will max out the current and it will drop the voltage to maintain that current. So we can let this go for a little while. But that's basically how charging works. That means we can easily emulate this on our own. I'll let this go and see at what kind of voltage it terminates at. Sit rep. As we can see, the voltage is actually up now, so 21.06, volts. But interestingly, the current starts to fall. So because the current is dropping ever so slightly, it must mean we are almost at the um, cutoff for the voltage. As soon as the voltage hits its maximum, the current will just drop precipitously as the battery charges. It's been about 10 minutes now. This is an extremely slow charger, obviously, with half an amp. So I'm going to bring you back when we're a little bit closer to fully charged. Ah, shit. They say a watch pot never boils, and this one, well, I wasn't watching, boiled. So it hit its voltage, uh, its voltage limit, 21.99, so probably 22 volts. And now it hit its, uh, the current gradually... Uh, reduced until it hit zero. This is now fully charged. So that's pretty neat to know that it has a 22 volt cutoff voltage. I'm not sure if this thing has like a bleed resistor because certainly it hit 22 volts and then um, kept going down in current until it was at zero. Or maybe there's some sort of cutoff there. So very interesting to know is I would like to see what the voltage is directly on the battery because this is the charging terminal here. So it could actually have dropped a volt sort of between the charging terminal and the actual battery. So let's see if we can measure that. Take this guy out. This guy to zero. check the DC volts. Okay, so yeah, so there we go. 20.86. It is just short of the 21 volts we calculated, so that's good. Uh, it's also a very good idea not to go all the way up to max. Go pretty close to max, but not all the way up. So that's how this one is done. But as long as there's no uh, diode in here, we could actually um, charge these two terminals just up to 21 volts because these packs are not balanced. So if one cell goes out of balance, the whole pack gets thrown out. So 21 volts. Um, this one here, if we wanted to be 100% sure, we could uh, charge this to 20.5. And we would get something like 85, 90% of the charge out of it. 
and we can be sure that this thing won't be overcharged. So next step is to set up to charge this guy. I've decided to do the charging of this battery using my D3806 power supply. It is a buck and boost module with um, settable voltage and current limiting. So this thing will be perfect for charging a lithium battery such as this. Now this thing is like $18. So it's kind of pricey, $18 Canadian that is. But you don't need really this. I use this because it's convenient and it has a wide range of inputs because it can buck or boost. But I took a look at this guy not too long ago, which is the LM2596. And this is very similar to what YouTuber Pile of Stuff used to charge his lithium batteries. All you need is a power supply that plugs into the wall, like a wall wart or whatever, with more than 20 volts of output voltage. So typically a um, printer power supply that you can find in any thrift store or a lot of thrift stores will have somewhere between 30 and 36 volts output. Also, if you're really wondering where you can get 24 volt output, you get low current 24 volt from any computer power supply. If you use the minus 12 volt as ground and the plus 12, 12 volt as your positive. Again, low current, but you shouldn't be charging these things at high current. And let me just be clear. None of these batteries should be charged unattended. And if you're going to build your own charger, that goes doubly so. So I am going to be charging this, but I will be sitting about two feet that way. Never leave these things to charge unattended, especially if you're doing it yourself, because lithium fires are nasty. To prevent any uh, problems I also have a 5 amp fuse soldered in line with my positive cable here. So let's check out what voltage my battery is at. Nineteen point three volts so actually it didn't drain all that much. I'm gonna go for a target of 20.5 volts because that covers me if they're only 4.1 volts per cell. And if they're 4.2 volts per cell, then I won't be stressing the cells up by bringing them up to their maximum voltage. Okay, so the only other thing I wanna do here is check the current. So I'm gonna set this to my 20.5 volts. Twenty point five oh, set. I'm going to set a current limit, which is fairly low. I'm going to go 250 milliamps. Going to be kind to this thing. Set. And now I'm going to set this into current mode. Like so. Set this to milliamp mode. Grab this end with my alligator clip like that. Use my black lead here to go from the negative side into the positive. Okay, so clearly the, the uh, positive lead goes here in series with the multimeter and into this battery. And now the output, you can just shove this lead right into there. And oh yeah, we're gonna see current because this thing's not active. So I'm gonna set this on. And there we go, we're in constant current mode. And I've got 250 milliamps on there. Just let me shove this in, there we go. So we got 250 milliamps charging here. Our voltage is stuck at 19 and three quarters, 19.75 and that voltage will slowly creep up as this current stays pinned at 250 milliamps until this battery tops up in uh, tops out at the voltage which is 20.5 then we're going to see this current drop so i'm going to bring you back a little closer to that point well it's been nearly an hour and we're still pinned on our 250 milliamps and we've only gone up to 20.1 
So that's starting to lend credence to the fact that this might actually be a 6 amp hour battery, but I'll take a look at that in a different video. But for now, I think you guys get the point. So for very inexpensive, you can charge these batteries. And you know what? I'm not expecting this battery to last, you know, five years. These are probably cheap Chinese cells. There's, um, you know, 10 cells in here, I'm guessing. And really, I think this method of charging, and especially charging it to 20.5, if it truly is a uh, 21 volt pack, I think will make this last just a little bit longer. So I think that's it for today, and I thank you very much for watching.